You know, when you stare at a flame, you, you kind of can't help but wonder, what the heck is that thing? <laughs> and for most of us, that's the end of it. Wonder and move on. But not for Tad Truscott and Dale Tree. Well, we call ourselves flamers. And I'm a professor. They're both at Brigham Young University. And so Dale and I actually sit across the hall from each other. Dale studies combustion, and Tad specializes in... Trying to understand how we can see things in a better way. And the flames interest me a lot because... It would be really sort of the pie in the sky, I guess, to visualize a flame, just because it is more delicate and sort of intricate looking than a lot of the other things that we're studying right now. By visualizing, Tad means making a 3D visual reconstruction of a flame like this, but for fire. And for Dale, understanding flames better means... Well, it would help us burn fuels more cleanly and efficiently to make electricity. That's because not all flames are the same. One of the interesting things that Dale's pointed out to me, which I didn't know before, is that that yellow part is actually soot particles. Uh Uh-huh. A candle, yeah, is a sooty flame, whereas your uh, natural gas stove with little tiny blue flames. What is soot exactly? Soot is carbon particles that went into the gas phase, and they didn't find any oxygen, so they combined together, and they nucleate into a solid particle. Leftovers, so to speak, from the burning and they're emitting light continuously like an incandescent light bulb. So it's the hot soot that actually emits the photons. And your eye sees this whole yellow thing, but uh, flame is actually an envelope around the region that's in the middle. What's in the middle? Uh, the, the fuel that hasn't burned yet. It's uh, actually cold, right? It's actually colder, yeah. The fuel is the wax, and you can see it being slurped up the wick. Essentially, surface tension draws it up there. The wax is heated by the flame, turns into a gas, and then burns when it comes in contact with oxygen. Some candles probably have more flicker, and it's probably just the type of wax they have and the flow rate. Mapping things like the flame's flicker and internal shape and temperature, which you can get from color profile, are some of what Tad and Dale are trying to do. They're using this technique that Tad is pioneering in his lab. What you're essentially doing is gathering light from all these different angles. There are these high-speed cameras. First thing we do is we calibrate the cameras in three dimensions. So we have like a calibration plate we put out there, and then all the cameras take images of that plate. And then using a computer algorithm, they line up the images to make one composite. We call it a focal stack. We put the focal stack together, and then we have a 3D representation. And then this becomes this. This may be the first 3D flame reconstruction video ever made. Just think, humans are thought to have controlled fire in the middle of the Paleolithic era. And here we are, half a million years later, just starting to quantify it. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.